Jupiter has a lot going on, with massive storms, intense winds auroras and severe, temperature and pressure extremes the James Webb Space Telescope of NASA has now taken fresh images of the planet, Webb's Jupiter observations will provide scientists with much more information about Jupiter's inner workings. The two images were captured by the observatory's near-infrared camera, or near-cam which has three specialized infrared filters, that highlight the planet's details because infrared light is imperceptible to the human eye. It has been mapped onto the visual spectrum. In general the longest wavelengths look redder while the shortest wavelengths appear bluer. The web data was translated into images by scientists, in collaboration with citizen scientist Judy Schmidt. Aurora stretched to high heights over Jupiter's northern and southern poles. In the solar picture of Jupiter which was made from a composite of many web photos, the auroras glow in the redder colored filter, that also accentuates light reflected from lower clouds, and upper hazes an alternative filter mapped to yellows and greens depicts hazes, whirling around the poles a third blue map filter highlights light reflected from a deeper primary cloud, because the clouds are reflecting so much sunlight the great red spawn a renowned storm, so large it might engulf Earth looks white in these images as do other clouds, Webb views Jupiter with its thin rings which are a million times fainter than the planet, and two tiny moons called Amalthea and Adrastic, in a wide field image the fuzzy specks in the lower background are most likely galaxies, photobombing this picture of Jupiter. The difference in image detail in mind-boggling. The first full-color images from NASA's James Webb Space Telescope have been released, and they're absolutely breathtaking. That's because, the telescope has yielded the deepest, and sharpest infrared photos of the early universe to date. Webb is the largest and most powerful telescope ever launched into space, a promising successor to the famous Hubble telescope. Here's are the top three differences between the two telescopes, as per NASA, Webb primarily looks at the universe in the infrared, while Hubble mostly studies it at optical and ultraviolet wavelengths. This makes a big difference, as infrared views can peer through cosmic dust and unveil hidden objects or formations. Webb also has a much bigger mirror than Hubble. This larger light-collecting area means that it can peer farther back into time than Hubble is capable of doing. While Hubble orbits around the Earth at an altitude of 570 kilometers, Webb is much farther away. It sits at the Earth-Sun L2 Lagrange point, 1.5 million kilometers away. Even with our humble, Earth-bound eyes, we can still observe the difference in image quality and details the telescopes produce. Take a look, SMAX 0723 SMAX 0723 is a cluster of galaxies within the southern constellation of Volans. It's about 5.12 billion light-years away, southern ring nebula. This is a planetary nebula, an expanding cloud of gas, surrounding a dying star. It's nearly half a light-year in diameter, and is located approximately 2,000 light-years away from Earth, Stefan's Quintet. About 290 million light-years away, Stefan's Quintet is a group of five galaxies, located in the Pegasus constellation. It's notable for being the first compact galaxy group ever discovered in 1877, Carina Nebula. Carina Nebula is one of the largest and brightest nebulae in the sky, located approximately 7,600 light-years away. 
It's home to many massive stars that are several times larger than the sun. Galaxies are the building blocks of the universe. The giant galaxies we see today, even our own, were built up from many smaller galaxies. But construction isn't done yet. It continues even today. Full-grown galaxies approach and interact with each other. They may collide and eventually merge. As the galaxies approach, the tug of gravity creates tides that distort their shapes. Stars and gas stream into new orbits. Sometimes they're completely ejected, trailing into the depths of intergalactic space. Gas clouds compressed in the chaos light up with intense rounds of star formation. Because stars create most of the chemical elements, such episodes have a profound effect on a galaxy's chemical makeup. This infrared image of the entire sky shows half a billion stars. Most are in our galaxy. Some are not. These are companion galaxies that orbit our Milky Way. And some are in between. In 1994, astronomers discovered that some of these stars actually belong to a different galaxy. It's called the Sagittarius Dwarf Elliptical, and the Milky Way is tearing it apart. As the dwarf galaxy passes through the Milky Way's disk, gravitational tides stretch the dwarf stars into long streams that wrap around the galaxy's orbit. For the dwarf, it's a fatal attraction. For the Milky Way, it's but one of many similar events that shaped our home galaxy but there's something much bigger headed our way. M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. This is no dwarf. It's the Milky Way's biggest neighbor, of roughly the same size, mass, and type. Astronomers say the crash will begin about two billion years from now. This supercomputer simulation shows how the event may unfold over billions of years. The first pass distorts the two great spirals. Stars are tossed into the intergalactic night like sparks thrown from a campfire. Our sun, complete with planets in tow, could be similarly ejected. Each pass blurs the identities of each galaxy. Eventually, Andromeda and the Milky Way will merge into a single entity some astronomers call Milkomeda. How do the shape, structure, and chemical content of galaxies change over the sweep of cosmic history? Deep surveys by the James Webb Space Telescope will capture the full panorama. From the earliest dwarfs that formed to the familiar galaxies we see around us today. <laughs>